What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here. Still feeling under the weather, so we're going to try to keep this one short and sweet, but I wanted to get a Friday video out for you guys and girls. And we're going to talk about a potential trap to avoid when investing in or buying whatever these guys that are going off in a short sample size like for example the nba playoffs so that's what we're gonna talk about today like comment subscribe today we're gonna use jordan pool and jordan pool could end up being a excellent in fact he already is he's the most improved player in the nba most likely uh already an excellent nba player has the potential to be a star nba player perhaps his prices are getting extreme heat right now. He's one of the breakout stars of the NBA playoffs, and that's all well and good. And there's a decent chance you'll be able to make money on Jordan Poole if that's your thing to quick flip him. And that's how I would approach this. I would not fall into this trap of buying Jordan Poole and wanting to stash him away for long term because you think he is the future of the Warriors or whatever. Jordan Poole is the perfect get in and get out example. And that's where the trap is. People fall into the trap of wanting to hold the player. And here's the reason why you don't want to hold Jordan Poole long term. One, there's going to be opportunities that you're going to be able to buy him back cheaper. There just absolutely is. The biggest reason for that is, and this is where the real trap lies. And, you know, one of my frequent commenters mentioned this in a post a couple days ago uh, and then I was talking about it again with a completely different set of people in a, a discord and I said you know what let's just make a video about this Jordan Poole's population if you're at least if you're talking graded cards specifically here is artificially low just because this stuff hasn't been graded yet this is 2019 prism we kind of know how much of this stuff is out there for example, Jordan Poole, as you can see here, this is over the last 14 days. His PSA 10 is up 64%. His Silver Prism is up 100%. All well and good, making nice profits off of them. But at least on the PSA graded stuff and then the graded stuff in general, there is a bit of artificial scarcity. Why do I say that? Because just a lot of his stuff hasn't been graded yet. Once again, this is 2019 Prism. We have a general idea for how much of this stuff exists. His PSA 10 population is 572. The PSA 9 population is like around 450. There's a little over a thousand PSA 9s and PSA 10s in his silver combined. When you look at someone like John Morant, their PSA 9 and 10 population added together is around 2,500 ish. Don't hold me to the exact number, but somewhere right in there. And Jordan Poole's is only a thousand. Once again, playing a little fast and loose with the numbers here. So we know that, assuming unless there's some weird thing specifically with Jordan Poole cards, that there's at least another thousand cards that can get added to that PSA population report. Let's call them split equally between nines and tens. And what happens when that extra supply hits the market? And that is going to take a little bit of time to hit the market. You know, you're probably not sending Jordan Poole in at Super Express. You're probably sending it in at regular service. Regular service is turning around in about a month, assuming you get the slots. That's $50 a card. Send it in. Get it back in a month. What are the Warriors doing in the month? We don't know. Uh, they could be competing in the Western Conference Finals. The NBA playoffs has been crazy so far with injuries and stuff. And the Warriors have a real opportunity with Devin Booker being out for a while now. So they absolutely could be in the Western Conference Finals on their way to the NBA Finals, which is great. That's the whole point of this. Make your money on guys. And once again, we're picking on Jordan Poole here, but you could use this example for any number of players. Make your money on these guys while you can. Get in, get out. And then either buy them back later if you really like the player. Or take that money and put it into something else that you truly want. But guys like this, the Jordan Poole category. And once again, he could go on to be an NBA all-star. I guarantee you, you'll have opportunities to buy this card back cheaper over the next eight months. Move in, move out. 
keep it moving forward. Don't get caught up in holding guys like this long term. Every once in a while, one's going to burn you. You're going to sell one of these guys and you're going to be like, oh man, his stuff went to the moon and never came back down again. Those are going to be few and far between. More often than not, they're going to spike up, they're going to pull back, and in a lot of cases, they will never see those previous highs again. And you could have made your money on it, moved it on into something that you truly do care about. And even if you really, maybe you end up really liking Jordan Poole and you do need to buy it back later, don't forget, there's also the long-term angle of, you know, let's say you bought Jordan Poole for 100 You sold it for 500 So now you got 500 bucks back in your pocket. Jordan Poole goes to 1000 Now you're kicking yourself that you didn't hold on to Jordan Poole because he went to 1000 bucks. What you have to keep in mind is, what did you do with the 500 Did you take the 500 and use that to buy something that also turned into from 500 to 1000 Well, then you're in the same place that you were anyway. So what's the difference? Maybe you spent that 500 and turned it into 1500 or maybe 2000 Or maybe you turned it into 200 because you got unlucky or made a bad decision or whatever. All that stuff could happen, but all that stuff could also happen to Jordan Poole just as likely. In fact, if not, more likely. Odds are you'll be better off to take the profit from whatever player it is that you're talking about and spin that into the next thing than just riding it out with that player over the long term. Especially, and once again, this is angled towards ultra modern current players playing, not, you know, vintage is a different story. That sort of stuff's a whole different ball game. And this is very specifically targeted on these guys. I don't want to say they come out of the woodwork because Jordan Poole is fairly popular, fairly trendy, but... With the way the whole grading situation's been the last year and a half, it's not like a lot of his stuff was filtering through PSA. There could be a very high, I didn't check to see what his SGC population is, uh, but there could be a decent amount of his cards sitting in SGC slabs. And once again, this isn't the pick on Jordan Poole, insert player X here, because there will be somebody else. Uh, In fact, there's probably already players like this that you're thinking of so far this playoffs, but he is the most prominent name And he does. Once again, he shows great upside. He is probably going to be an excellent NBA player, potentially has the upside of an NBA all-star. Who knows? He looks great. That's not the point here. The point is, is what do the market dynamics look like for him by the time we roll around to the beginning of next season or free agency in the middle of the summer as he's not in the limelight anymore. Maybe they win the title. Maybe they don't. Maybe he's a huge part of that. That's definitely an outcome. And that is an outcome that could skyrocket his prices to the next level. And I'm not saying run out and sell Jordan Poole today, but I wouldn't want to be carrying Jordan Poole beyond whenever the Warriors get eliminated from the playoffs. So if, and it looks like they're going to move on clearly this round, Depending on what happens and who they run into and all that, the other thing that I always would recommend doing is sell a little early. I would rather sell during the East, during the conference finals than during the NBA finals. And in fact, a lot of cases, that's when you see prices spike for guys. Because once the finals roll around, it becomes very swingy, depending on what the series is doing. So if they make it to the Western Conference finals, that would be a very good opportunity window to sell there. There's going to be a lot of hype going into the Western Conference Finals, and then you're just clean and free and clear and out of it. And once again, this is Jordan Poole specific, but any player like this, sit down and realistically look at, and especially in this microcosm of the NBA playoffs, look at what their team's outcome is. What is the most realistic? Who are they going to run into? And start projecting that forward and be ahead of the game. You want to be a step ahead versus trying to sell when they're down 2-1 to the 76ers or the Bucks or the Celtics or whatever. And as we know, even though a lot of these players win a title, sometimes their prices still go down afterwards anyway. So why even chance it? Just take the profit and run. And no, more supply of, in this case, PSA 10s are going to be hitting the block, PSA 9s, whatever. We know people are going to run out to grade this stuff, and then what happens when that additional supply hits the market? If demand just stays the same, that additional supply is going to hit, and it's going to drive prices down. 
at least a little bit. So just things to keep in mind. Once again, maybe you agree with me. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're saying Jordan pool to the moon and I'm riding this rocket ship. Uh, or maybe you're getting off somewhere between here and the moon and, and coming back to Earth. No one's right. No one's wrong. This is just how I like to do things to limit limit risk uh, as much as possible and just take profits when you can and move it into the next thing. And like we like to say, they do let you buy them back. So uh, that's all I have for you guys and girls today. I'm going to go rest the voice. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.